Hi, I'm Paris, and I have just finished three years on Lupron for prostate cancer. I'm hoping I'm done with Lupron forever. So many side effects, and I know before I signed up to take it, I had to look over all the possible side effects and sign that I agree I want to have this treatment. I have had surprisingly many of those side effects, but they were pretty much apparent right away. The one that I haven't known how it was going to turn out was bone density loss, which is a pretty major one when you play with the hormones. And for, for me, Lupron knocked my testosterone levels all the way down to undetectable. I knew I was going to have some bone density loss, but was it going to be the 5 to 10% a year? Was I going to have 15 to 30% of my bones gone? If you remember a cartoonist from, oh, three or four decades ago, Gary Larson did the little one frame panel cartoons, very clever ones. And what came to mind was his uh, panel that underneath said, Boneless Chicken Ranch. And in the panel were just the chickens all kind of flopped <laughs> on the ground because they didn't have any bones left. And I wondered if that's where I was headed to. Well, I have here my bone density scan results. I have here the results from last month's scan at the end of my Lupron treatment. And this one is from two years ago. I had been on Lupron oh, about 10 months at the time. So let me explain a little about how this test works and then maybe I can figure out whether I should start bathing in shake and bake. So let's start with my September 2021 scan of my hip and spine. They look at bone mineral density in three places, all towards your lower back and hip because that broken hip, boy, that gets a lot of older people. So there are four lumbar vertebrae that they check and it's a little confusing with the numbers minus 0 0.9 t-score minus 0 0.3 z-score so i'll show you how that works in just a second here and then we also have the left total hip and then the left femoral neck which is the neck of your femur the femur being that big bone that goes from your knee up into your hip and often when people say they've broken their hip Turns out a lot of times it's right up where the, the head of the femur comes into the hip right there. That bone right before the head, they call it the neck. That's usually what cracks from what I've read. And with my father, when he broke his hip about four years ago, that's where he broke it. And then I have my FRAX scores. I assume fracture. And there's major osteoporotic percentage chance and the hip percentage chance. Now to go back up and look at these T scores and Z scores, some are positive numbers by a little bit. Uh, most of them are negative numbers. And so it's confusing, but basically the larger the value, the better off you are. So if you have a positive number, that's really good. But normal is considered minus one or up. So minus one, minus 0.5, I guess zero, 0.51. You're going up in value, those are good numbers. The numbers between minus one and minus 2.5, that's considered osteopenia, that's low bone mass, that's where you're getting worried about it. And if your value is minus 2.5 or below, that's full on osteoporosis. So in my scan from September, 2021, none of my numbers are below minus 1.0, like 1.01 .01 or on down. None of them are there, so everything's in the normal range. We can jump ahead and look at the impression, which is the radiologist's thoughts on my bone health. Let's take a look. Number one, bone density is normal in the total lumbar spine, total hip and femoral neck. Yay. Number two, the 10 year probability of major osteoporotic fracture is 8.2%. Well, that seems a little high if I'm in the normal range, but I guess, you know, people have a chance of breaking their bones. So that's the 10 year chance of a major bone break, 8.2%. Okay, I can be a little careful and I can live with that. The 10 year probability of hip fracture is 0.1%. Well, that's pretty low. I'm liking that number. So in short, my bones were in pretty good shape two years ago, back when I had just been on the Lupron less than a year, but that is after having finished chemo and radiation, my bones were still going strong. Two more years on the Lupron, what could that have done to me? Take a look. So my October 2023 scan, starting at the same spot here with the lumbar spine, the T scores and the Z scores, a few 
very few, stayed the same, all the rest have gone down. In fact, my L1 score is actually a minus 1.3 T-score, and if you remember, anything below minus 1.0 puts you out of the normal range and into osteopenia, which is on your way to osteoporosis. Left total hip score, that's down. Left femoral neck score, that's down. And my FRAX score. Let's look here, Magio osteoporotic event. Likelihood, 8.7% up from, what was it, 8.2%. Yeah, that's not so bad considering all how much my numbers have gone down. And for the hip, it stayed the same. My ri risk of a hip fracture over the next 10 years, 0.1%. So what did the radiologist think of this now that there was a previous scan to compare it to? Number one, bone density in the total lumbar spine remains normal. They do mention the 1.3% decrease, but that does not reach a 95% confidence level for a significant change, which I find awfully confusing because I'm confident it has changed, but they're basically giving me the benefit of the doubt and saying I'm still in the normal range there for the lumbar spine. Number two, bone density in the total hip remains normal, although there's a 3.8% decrease in bone mineral density. Eww. And number three, oh, this, knowing what happened to my father, this is the one that really gets me. Bone density in the left femoral neck remains normal, although there is a 5.5% decrease in bone mineral density. So the radiologist gave me the benefit of the doubt and kept all of my ratings still in the normal range, though a couple of those numbers that dropped quite a bit, especially the one that's down below the minus 1.0 cutoff point, does worry me. That being said, unless I can get some more minerals back in my bones in the next couple years and reverse some of this bone mineral density loss, which I understand it's possible to do. And anyway, unless I can do that, you probably won't be seeing me do this in a while. We're cruising. Holy crap, man. But my scores are not going to keep me off the trails and off climbing the high points of each state. That's my thing now. And I believe by going out and doing those kinds of exercises, I'm going to strengthen my bones now that I'll have some testosterone back to do a little mineral adding on as I combine a good diet with enough calcium, with enough vitamin D, with a K2, all the things I need for the bones to resorb some minerals back out of the bloodstream and the exercise, especially the weight bearing exercise, which hiking I think is a pretty good one because you gotta get your weight up to altitude. And so the hips and the femur and the lower back all get a good workout. So I'm going to continue to do somewhat crazy things, but not very crazy things, at least not for a while until I can build those bone densities back up. I do believe I can do that. I'm not sure if they're going to schedule me for another scan in a couple, three years, because if I'm not on the Lupron, then that shouldn't be a contributing factor. Then bone loss is just your typical older age bone loss. And I really can't complain too much because my scans could have been much worse. I could have lost a lot more bone mineral density. I think the healthy eating that I've been doing and staying physically active, especially with the climbing and the hiking, I think that helped to preserve the bone. And so now I just gotta go build some more, maybe a can of spinach, a corn cob pipe, and an anchor tattoo, and it'll all come back. And I'll see you on the next review. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health food and home receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.